My toast. Was it good toast? It was, although I believe that there's a shortage of um, uh, Marmite, so it might be one of my last Marmite toasts for a while. What's Marmite? It's awful. It's, <laughs> That's all you need to it's, know about it's Marmite. A, it's awful. It's, 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 slogan is like you love it or you hate it, but it's very um, Commonwealth, I would say. It's like British and, and Australian. And Australians have got their own version of it, but it's like, yeah, it's a Commonwealth thing. South Africans and Rachel obviously Ra Rachel it's it, what it's made of is when they brew beer it's the the sludge that the, the yeast that they don't use to brew the beer they send that off and then and then they ferment it some more and it's this black when I was a kid I used to call it black jam because that's the best description of it it's like black like, jam. It's like black honey yeah salty black it's, honey yeah. yeah salty black honey yeah, yeah. it's delicious it, it sounds good it is. It's really nice. It's, yeah. You know? <laughs> I'm also like the, the from the yeasting. I'm also the person that likes the grimy bit and beers that they leave on the bottle and you pour it in the glass. Oh box. yeah. No, uh, I think I think you'd be a I think you'd be a fan. <laughs> anyway, send me your address, Bob. I'm gonna send you a thing of Marmite. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't, don't eat Bovril. It looks it looks the same, but don't eat Bovril. Anyway, Bovril's sorry. Also, a thing that I've heard before, but I don't know what it is. That's a meat version. Also, like, what could what could possibly be bad about that? <laughs> Salty honey meat, black. Yeah, it's just oh, of course. No. So air budgets. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Andrew, you are actually the person I wanted to talk to you about this. Um, we were cool. chatting in the epic. Like, hey, do we need an error rate yeah. thing for that first SLIs? We decided no. Then I, uh, right now we work with Aptex as a success rate already, but we get it from a histogram using uh, the yeah. Ram Aptex method, like a helper method that we defined in our library. But right yeah. now, service level indicators don't have anything along the lines of success rate. But let me open up that issue and maybe share my screen. Yeah. Um, Two desktops, I only have one. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So we like we'll we're going to have uh, we're going to be measuring aptex encounters, and that's going to be a total counter and a success counter. Yeah. And now uh, we want to end up using those as service level indicators for our well services. <laughs> so we have a way of defining. Uh, indicators inside our uh, service catalog and that roughly looks uh, like this actually so you can have an aptex error rate and request rate so, like yeah bits that you specify uh, how do we end up plugging that in to like how do we want to plug that into the uh, success rate into the service level indicators there's two things that i uh, thought of like first one is we make the the like we just keep it as app text the way we have it now yeah and make that smarter to work with a counter instead of like rather than a histogram that shouldn't be that much work because in the end yeah it's just the a it's just the function that you plug in right so it's, yeah. it's so kind you, of pluggable plug, in that way already you, you plug in a different function that looks kind of yeah. the same and it should also like i already think that we use the histograms as counters farther down the line. So we just need to make it look the same and it, it'll, it should just work. Yeah. But I was thinking would success rates be useful elsewhere because we want to use the method that we added there. Like the, the thing that is supposed to end up in the lab kit should be a way for groups to define SLIs for anything they want. Uh, yeah. But I can't think of anything that they would want more that can't be uh, explained as aptex or error rate. Yeah. So I don't um, really need that. Yeah, I mean, I was I was thinking about, and this is just like another example of something to think of. But 
we, we're talking about this front end observability working group. And what I've been saying is that they should have SLIs. And so I was the thing, but I guess it's also an app deck. So I was just, I was thinking about like how long it takes that mergeability widget. That's something that bugs me a lot at the moment because it's flaky and, and having that, like how long does your page sit there? But that, I guess that's just a straight app deck. So again, or, um, the thing is that it, it's like calling back to the stuff that is being discussed uh, in the open yeah. flow group and the spec there. They also only talk about a way to measure overall versus good and not overall versus bad or a separate yeah. definition for the thing that we call app tech. Yeah. I, I definitely like the fact that if we went down that route, it would put us more in line with like the, the standard and then, but the thing is, maybe we should stop if we do that. And it's uh, maybe we should stop referring to app decks and error rates as separate things, but they're all just SLIs, right? Um, yeah, that's and then the, that's the thing yeah. that I'm also thinking about. Like right now, we have an SLI, and an SLI consists of the total request, yeah, and app which is different and from the, the, which the is different kind from of the spec. industry semantics, yeah, yeah, exactly, because that says an SLI has a total and a, yeah, like error or like success or yeah failure yeah so so then the thing that we do is do we we don't need to like we don't require mm. both an app text and an error rate to be present we can define slis right now in our service catalog like yeah as far as with I just you know this yeah obviously. And we can define yeah. them with just an app text or just an error rate so yeah the, the in that context we could add this like use add a way to totally success rate and then we're the, we can migrate there like we have a path yeah. there but so the only thing work. is we'd have to that that seems like a good path the only thing we'd have to be careful of is we have to start renaming things in dashboards and stuff so also um the the migration path that i've specified in this epic is we add yeah. a new sli yeah, and uh, we add a new SLI next to the one we currently have. That's called Puma. yeah. Here I've called yeah. it Rails, but whatever you want to call it. So and you want to call it yeah, yeah. It has a new name, and it uh, yeah. only contains a single thing, like either an update yeah. or an error rate. In this case, it's update. Yeah. So what about if they just and I'm just thinking aloud now. What about if we had it that they had the same? You could have two things that had the same name. But they had a separate, a second thing, which could then be called app. So it's called Puma, but then we have Aptex and Error as a second label. I don't know what the name of that la label would be. Um, SLI type, I think something like. I, I, I don't know, um, because then the the reason is is like on a lot of dashboards, people do, and especially I'm talking about SREs here. They respond differently to 500s and slowness, right? So if, if 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 we have a way of separating things that are like errors from things that are slowdowns, uh, like culturally people, like whether or not that's a good thing is a separate discussion, but culturally people respond to them differently, right? And um, you know the 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 conversation that had happened in the daily stand up yesterday, and again I don't know whether this is a good or a bad thing. But people were saying, oh, well, the the reason our error budget is so bad is all down to app decks. So it's not it's not as bad as it seems, right? Which is again like a question about whether or not that's true. But but I I wonder whether it would be more helpful to be able to distinguish those things and 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 be able to say these ones are 500s like real hard errors and these ones are are slow you know like these I think, are I think from, because yeah. if we if we go to a thing where an indicator just just means one thing and not two things then we will we could yeah. end up weighting them or something like that uh, or just like if we can label them as as what kind of indicator they are or you know and then cuz cuz having it like the what I'm kind of rolling all the way back to here is on on the dashboard when you go to like the web service right i still think that having those two panels you know at the top one for aptex one for errors, errors. 
um, might be might be helpful. And so if we can if we can label them in a way that that we can split those apart there. But the difference would be that they would both be hopefully pinned near a hundred percent. Not one of them pinned near a hundred percent. One of them near agree. zero. You know, what one is good high, one is good low. Now they'll both be good high. Um, but yeah, I think that 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 does seem to be a path. So to uh, do that, you would just do a big refactor of all the the J sonnet um, and split everything second, into two. To do the second thing in the first iteration, I would just add the success rate yeah. kind of thing. Like right now, we have the keys total. Uh, mm. Well, request count, uh, error rate, and app text. So for the new SLI, I would add the success rate yeah. kind of key that you could have there, and then you either like a, you either have success rate or error rate. And for new SLIs, I would argue to separate the things. So don't have app text and yeah. error rate next to each other. So my next question, Bob, is how do we so the reason error rate is the, the way it is, or one of the reasons, and now, and actually equally true for Aptex, is because it's easy to calculate it that way around. So um, status code equals 500 divided by status to, to requests, where status code equals 500 divided by requests is easy to come up with the error rate, right? And yeah, but in other, order to switch that to a success rate, yeah, sorry, are you going to do one minus or are you going to flip the labels? I would, I haven't thought about that, but okay. got to I, flip I, the label. I think, I think the thing is, there's probably two dozen, three, no, probably more than that. How many, how many of these error rates are there across? The thing, there's quite a few. The thing and is, some I, of them, I would probably not do this, like I would keep the, SLIs that we currently have, right? The way we okay. currently have them, and then if the the stage groups want to, well, yeah, basically we would define the, right. the same way you're doing now for errors. We would change because we also want to move away where four hundred mm. are being counted towards aptex and that kind of stuff, or uh, yeah. four hundred being counted as a successful yeah. I, request. I think we should that that's a yeah. I mean that's a that's a much bigger discussion. The the reason why I I think we could consider doing it all in one in one go and we could do everything, but we can't do it by changing the labels and kind of inverting things. But what we can do is we can do the, the one minus arithmetic, right? Um, where, because in some cases it's a label that we're looking at, but in other cases we're actually counting failures and it'll be much harder to switch those around to counting successes because we don't have the success metric in Prometheus. And but, so those ones, so we can do a general case and then things might get a lot simpler and we, and we only have to do one big flip of everything for the, for the SREs where we say there is no longer an error rate. Everything is a, is a, you know, we do rather than having these things are success rates and these things are error rates. So you'd rather not have uh, the things live next to each other for a while is what you're saying. Um, yeah, I think I, so as a first step, we could almost, um, make all the error rates that are error rates in the, in the SLI metrics, we could flip those over, right? To success rates. To success rates. And so that we only have success rates and we just do that arith using arithmetic, not using, um, that's label, um, yeah, not use cause that, that's like a, a, a a whole bundle of, and then a whole lot of things become kind of simpler around, you know, all the all the things about how we um, do an SLO. You know, there's two two ways at the moment how we do the SLO alerting. There's the one approach that we use for app decks and the other for errors, and those would just become one. And a lot of things would become simpler, and then kind of adding new ones that are only success rates might be like, I'm, I'm also thinking from an explaining to people point of view, like imagine a new SRE or a new um, person came and joined the team. We'll say, well, we've got app dexes and those are measured as success rate. We've got errors, which are the inverse of that. And then we have this like bag of other things, which are, Saturation. you know, could be app dexes and could, know. you know, and, 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 and those are success rates. And so it's sort of, there's quite a lot of cognitive overhead, like, um, 
in 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 understanding it where if if we make it if we if we bring them in line first and then just have that that brings us in line with the industry which is really nice uh is that is that the case because i was always thinking that error rates are a well understood concept and that everybody's using that yeah well they, they they are but but not for for the for the slo stuff right like well um the you know the way that we it's total successes over you know so we tend the other thing you can do is if you bring them all in line you can always have the graphs flipped around right so you can if you have the the metrics in in oh there's one other thing i'm thinking of now we're going to have to run this in parallel we can't just flip everything no no because no. I, because yeah, of, I assume that because things are going to blow up we can't just flip alerts around yeah we we need like, like at least 30 days things. history yeah. well i'm more i'm more thinking about the you know for the sla charts that those will all break and lose all their history um so we'll we'll definitely need to run those well, in parallel for I, at I, least I, a month i'm not because that uh, those sla charts use the SLO uh, observation status kind of metric, which is a recording from yeah. all the SLIs. So, which well, well, which is a recording of all the services, yeah. which is a recording of all the SLIs for that service. So I think yeah, no, it's not all the services. It's only it's only a, a basket. Yeah, but the, yeah, the primary yeah, services yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Um. Uh, so I, are, are so you you're thinking? Of, yeah. You're, sure, you, you really think that we should do this before, uh, before anything else? I, 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 no. I mean, I think, I think you, you are like much further into this than I am, and you've been looking at it, and and like I, I'm really happy to kind of go with 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 what you think, um, but I but do it, think it is that going to that be difficult, it, as you mentioned, to explain. This is an error rate. It's it's supposed to be zero. This is a success rate. Yeah. Success rate it's supposed to be one hundred. Uh, and then like, and, and also we have we all, like we all have of our code. Them. Yeah. No. 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 We do. It's just like if we're adding new things, um, and those new things are okay. So I guess this brings us all the way back to your original question which is, do we have, the other way we could just do this is we have some SLIs that are, that are error rates. Is this, is this kind of what your original question was? My, 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 well, so my original question is, do we make app decks? The, mm. Yeah, so yeah. do we keep what we have now and don't move in the direction of having SLIs as a success rate? Or mm. do we, Add a success rate type of SLI that would, uh, like yes, that would be directly with two counters. We yeah. My suggestion is add this kind of like make make the service level yeah. definition support this success rate kind of counter. Yeah. And go from there. Yeah. Uh, so then, so yeah. so can I just add one more thing in there underneath the rail where it says service indicators rails? Can we have a um, an attribute which is the the service level indicator type, and then it says app dex, yeah, and that um, or error, and we have an enum of of values. Yeah, uh, and that that just becomes a static label. Totally agree with that. Let me take yeah. a note. Yeah, that's one thing. The question that uh, comes with that, and it's partly answered, is uh, yeah. should this thing that we add here yeah. Use, yeah. be used to get what threshold we use for it? <laughs> Sorry, say that again. Be so used we, have, to, yeah. we, we, have, we have these monitoring thresholds. We have separate yeah. different kind of thresholds, and they all have a key. Uh, we'll yeah. use this threshold for the app text and this one for the error ratio and like, uh, yeah. Oh, this is going to be hard <laughs> because <laughs> they're so different, right? We can't go to a single one. So, so what we can do? Just here's an idea. We but don't I, want to again, go to I haven't. A single one, but uh, the thing that uh, pushes me towards having the success rate yeah. here is because this one already mm. is in that direction. Like we flip it at some point yeah. already. And yeah. We wouldn't need to do that anymore. 
exactly but i'm i'm more like if you look at those two right for so so imagine we had just slo because that's what it is really yeah. and we said it if you you know and then we and then we merged everything and everything was just a, a success rate sli the one is 99.8 percent. like in this exact example this shows you how and the other's four nines right so like as high as you ever want to go with an slo yeah. and and so you can't really put it in the middle because half of them are going to fire all the time and the other half are never going to fire so what about remember i said we have that sli type and then that's the enum with two yeah. values yeah. we changed this from being monitoring thresholds the key on the monitoring thresholds is not aptex score and request rate it's it's the, the sli that, type yeah the sli and then, or whatever we call that thing. I mean, type is just such a terrible uh, label, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, because we already have a type label. Uh, yeah. SLI kind. Yeah, SLI kind. And, uh, yeah, and these uh, are the names of the threshold in. Because then we can keep what we've got there and we don't have to. You know, we can do the technical change without having to do like a, a business logic change if you want, right? We can kind of keep uh, those separate. There's, there's one more complication that we are going to run into later, and that's uh, let me show that in the editor. Uh, And that's uh, this this one here is yeah. the yeah. is flipped yeah. <laughs> yeah but so but but that you could re we could re well, back no, to those because if we so if that they not yeah because yeah. if we do uh, if the SLI kind we, that we specify is error yeah like this then we just write yeah 99 yeah yeah so um, i mean i think that 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 refactor could take place like in a vacuum and should be done because it's just super weird right like well it wasn't weird when the decision was made if i can defend it but it's super weird now because you know the whole everyone talks about like 99.95 and they were talking about five percent um and so well not five zero point zero five percent um and so we we could do that as a first pass where, where we just fix the contractual error threshold so, and make it a um a number of not you know the, the 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 kind of traditional slo measurement well we already have the positive way of thinking for the aptex in that thing i would argue that we just uh, as part of this project that's kind of a thing that the metrics catalog that way gets for free from scalability because we want to we want to have this thing that we give to the stage groups. Yeah. We, we have a success rate kind of thing. And that means that we can define more things as a success rate in the future. Like we're going to have the transitional yeah. period and it's going to be annoying. And yeah. I think we scalability yeah. should keep working on this the same way we keep working on the single yeah. keeper shard thing, even yeah. after we've done catch all, like even if after yeah. stuff is in the green, we yeah. continue so we don't leave a mess. Yeah, uh, like I've left a mess all, with the chef stuff. <laughs> all all programming is gardening, dude. <laughs> okay, Rachel. Yes. Can I have more time for this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the thing is with the error budgets, there's um, there yeah. is so much focus on error budgets right now, and using them to provide guidance to the development teams for how to improve the like the reliability of, of the system. So. We have to, one, we've got to know them inside out, but we also have to be improving them in a way that helps the engineers be able to use this more and help product be able to use it more so that they can use this for guidance. And I think whatever solution we choose here, it has to be, it, it has to be increasing the maturity of the error budgets and making them more accurate, but it also project, has to remain a way that we can communicate with them. Like if we project, make this comp, yeah. 
this project is focused on that side of the of the equation so the product side and making it more easy to communicate and making it like pushing it into their hands a little bit more but we need to be able to maintain that and reason about it from from the infrastructure side of things as well because if we are using different that's the the, the thing that started it this in the first place, we're using different indicators for alerting and, and, and monitoring than product mm. is using for error budget. So yeah. yeah, so bringing them all in line and using the same thing and having the same language throughout, yeah. I think is really valuable because, yeah. um, you know, we, we are, when someone new comes in and joins and suddenly they're asking all these questions about how this works, we want the yeah. answer to be a simple, easy answer rather than, yeah. well, you see, over here, we go, do this, go and read over there, the, we do you know, that. Start off by reading the SLO book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it needs to be easy and straightforward. And if that's going to take some time to put together, it's. I think it, it is absolutely worth, worth it. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the other thing to keep in mind is like, if we want to, what we could start doing is flipping those error rates over to success rates, but not relying on, on the data. Because then at a later stage, if we want to flip um, like the SLA calculations and, and you know, the, those other things that are currently built on top of that, we've got data. So if we do that earlier on, if you follow where I'm going, um, we can start collecting that data and then, and then the recording rules that are based on that will have back data. So for, but for can now, I show you, we'll can still I show you what I have in mind, Andrew, like just quick uh, okay. the codes thing. So let's go to Puma here. And we've got AppDex error rate request rate here. What I would yeah. like to do, we have a- Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is then basically the same as this. Yeah. And then when we have that for a month with the recordings and everything that it's having, we remove this. So can, can that, that inverted rate metric, yeah. that's got to have um, the top and the bottom in it, right? Because you can't do the, the arithmetic without um, both. Uh, what do you mean top? Is and everyone top? frozen? Uh, oh. I, can, I can hear you and I can hear Rachel. And, and I, I'm, I'm over here, but you are very still. I think Andrew has frozen. Yes. Too much Mahmoud. Oh, this is... I'm very happy I got Andrew on this call because otherwise I was going to reach out to the open SLO group to have the same conversation, but yeah. No, this is good. He'll be, I'm sure he'll be back soon. There's another half an hour anyway, but um, even, so what I was trying to say is even if we do flip it to be success rates, we need to still communicate it as error rate for a while and then introduce the change at a convenient time. Like um, if we suddenly change the messaging around it, it's going to be challenging to keep support for it. Well, the but... thing is, uh, and the same is going to happen while we do this. Like we're going to, at a certain point in time for the error budget, we're going to have two aptex measurements that are the same thing. Because but we, we need... show them one, but we only show and report on the one and then we flip to using the other one, right? Uh, for a very short time, we're going to have both because, well, they feed into the budget, the metrics come out like, uh, or we, uh, like there has to be a transitional period where either we have no aptex or we have two aptexes. But it's not double counted, right? It's uh, just, it's. It, well, it depends how fast our deploys run. <laughs> I think when we, I mean, I understand that we'll need to do that. And I think as we get closer to it, we can figure out exactly how that's going to look and how we communicate what, what's happening. Yeah. Um, I don't think that the effect on the error budget would be huge for this though, um, while we do that flip, because if it counts twice, uh, like it also adds an operation. So, uh, if you have yeah, uh, so the bottom part of the the calculation is still going is still increasing. Yes. So the the thing is that uh, with with the little table that I'll, I linked to you this morning, um, the two on two would become a four on four, or yeah. a, a one or a zero on two instead. 
And when people go to see the detail of it in the logs, they're still seeing the same. Thing. It's still providing the same information and it's still telling them what they need to do about their spend. Yeah, the, yeah. the logs stay the same. So yeah. And actually, like I came uh, from a discussion with Luke this morning, we also went to the logs there to see why something is slow because you can't get that from the metrics right now. Yeah. There's and Andrew. He's back. And sorry, I think my. I've got a little dongle that connects my um, Ethernet. Uh, I think it's I think it's on the blink. Anyway, um, so what what I was going to say was that success rate. Yeah. In in order to do the arithmetic to if you've got an error rate, so say you've got the the uh, failure the the failure rate. Yeah. Okay. And with, without going through everyone and basically carefully inverting that, that regular expression, for example, um, and we, as, as we mentioned, you can't do that in every case because some of them are, we, we, we've got failure counters. Yeah. So if we want to do the success rate, the easiest way is going to be one minus, sorry, yeah, one minus error rate over total, right? But that means you need to have the error rate and the total in that inverted rate metric. So it's just something, it's a minor point, uh, yeah, but that yeah, will, yeah. that'll have to have both of the, it, it can't do it without both, yeah, both so, of those pieces so of information. So we will need to wrap this one in because we can't, yeah, yeah. okay. It, it'll effectively be an amalgamation of those two things. And then we end up with uh, the thing that we now have in several places, it would be, uh, it's a total minus error over total. Well, total, this would end up in being total minus error. Uh, yeah, yeah, over or, or one minus error, change your, your brackets, one minus uh, error over total, but same, same difference. Uh, one minus error over y. It's the same number. It's just it's just um, hard to you... reason about. Yeah, it's weird. I, I it's it's quite strange because I find that um, easier to reason about, but I can totally see why you find it the other way around. I guess it's just. <laughs> Your but if it's the same, it's the same number. I agree. Yeah, it is. It's just, it's just where you've applied the. But I, I, I think of it like a hundred. It's, it's weird. But you, yeah, you're yeah. actually right. Like it is actually easier to reason about the other way around. Um, well, yeah, yeah. With, with yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. But that's what we, what like that's the path forward. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the I think adding... that's that's the path forward. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, is um, having. So what is that? How, how do we distribute things like the significant? Well, actually, it'll be really nice for significant labels because at the moment, the significant labels get applied equally to the aptexes and the errors. And sometimes the aptex has one and the errors doesn't. And so at the moment, it's kind of like, ah, well, you just have to suck that up. But now it will, they can have different sets. Um, and the same with yeah, the I, tooling links. Will to, you just I, distribute those onto all of them? Uh, I kind of might. <sighs> For now, I guess so. Yeah. But I think I want to end up in a place where an SLI has only one. So, and because it has the type thing, no? Like this thing that we that I added, the, the SLI kind thing, uh, sorry. So then we have yep. each SLI is a single thing, a total uh, and a success. Yeah. And it has a kind with two link links, yeah. significant labels, like, and all of the... Uh, like all of the SLIs have that, and we could have a base per service. JSON it allows yeah. us doing yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, that, that's just a, a code yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, in the end, we would then go to a place where each component yeah. only has a, like a, a success rate and a total rate kind of thing. Make sense or not? Uh, well, you'd still need to like, as, as long as I can drill down into logs from an SLI, you know, appropriate, relevant logs. And um, also the other thing that I'm really looking forward to, go to a dashboard. 
Uh, service overview view, you mean? Yeah, like a web 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 main or any of them. The and then just go to the Puma detail. I wish we standardized on the color scheme. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Let me let me do that quick. Um, because you don't like my color scheme. No, it's no, it's I actually prefer the the the, the light color scheme, but I've all the colors. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm colorblind, but um, they don't work at all well on a light background for me, so I can hardly see them. But when I originally built it, I built it with a light background, and then whenever I went to any of the SRE's computers, it looked terrible because they were They're all doing it on the dark. dark so I switched. Background. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't know, I think it's, I think it's worse for me than for most, but I, I really can't see anything on, on the, um, on the light background with the, with those, especially the yellow. Um, so if we go in here, this, this, this is just a small point, so I didn't mean to make it into a big thing, but we have this thing called aptX attribution, which is kind of like, um, a breakdown of like what's costing us our error by some dimension, right? And those dimensions come from the significant labels, right? So, you know, the more the more you get here, the more that particular thing, the, the combination of traffic and errors, right, is leading to, to those bleeds. Um, like, you know, here's the one per method. So you can see like the total uh, is, is whatever, like probably 0.2%, uh, but 0.19% of that is, um, is get right in this case where we're going on on per method and this 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 thing i just did for aptex but it it's equally possible to do this for errors um we just uh, you know it just never got put in here but if you look at um those gitterly um alerts that people are getting a lot of right this this would just basically illuminate the problem straight away. So at the moment, people are looking, and because they're looking at absolute um, errors, they they sometimes get confused as to what the the root cause is. But this is, you know, this really breaks down the, the error budget by what part of your of the application is is, co is causing you to bleed. And so if we have a single one, we can just move this aptX attribution to just like error attribute, you know, uh, non success, whatever you want to call it, attribution. Yeah. And it'll be and and then that'll be broken down by significant the significant labels error of each attribution, thing. Like using the name for this as long as it comes yeah. from a success metric, that's fine. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. No, totally. Yeah, no, it, it it it's fine. But um, that those will be really nice because I think that when everything's got that, and then you can really go to uh, uh, the other thing we should look at doing. Sorry, I'm I'm running jumping ahead here. But we can do that kind of over a month. And instead of having a chart, we can just give a table so that you can say like, someone says, oh, you know, we, we, we don't understand where our error budget's gone. And then you can say, well, over the last month, like you buy mean, your significant labels. You mean like the, we, mean like the table we, we currently show? We do. I was just thinking, as I was saying it, I think we do actually have that, don't we? Uh, wait, let me get. Is it in the stage groups? Yeah, let me pull that up. Uh, share screen, come on. Yeah. Oh, there, budget spend attribution. Gotcha. Uh, Do you want me to share my screen? I think my stuff is stopping. Uh, you share your screen because things are breaking here. You're talking about this, um, is it that? Uh, I can't see. <laughs> oh. oh, Zoom. Well, no, I, it's not your fault, it's yeah. here. Uh, stuff is broken. Yeah. I, yes, it's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so if we had this as a percentage, maybe the one takeaway on this is I'd say if we can have this as a percentage. So, you know, people are saying, well, you know, because it's kind of it's a little bit difficult at the moment to convert that into. I, obviously, it's still ranked. It's it, it's where people need to um, put the most effort, but we can also do it as a as a percentage. But yeah, that's great. We do actually have that. 
Uh, yeah, I was at, I was thinking to add two more columns there, a percentage and a total, but I hadn't gotten to yeah. it yet. And yeah, yeah. it becomes a bit crowded and... Hmm. Yeah, yeah. The 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 other kind of thing about the conversation with the um, with the totals is that I think it really helps to kind of um, explain why some groups have got like really bad error budgets um, because they just don't have traffic and it's statistical noise. And so yeah. you know the 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 database group were were complaining about it and. It, it is just an, a, a statistical noise. And so in that um, InfraDev report that we've got now, we, we include that. And I was even considering, I mean, maybe we have a lower threshold where we just exclude stage groups that have below like 0.1% or something like that. But that that's a separate discussion for-, uh, for Yeah, lines. or I think at some point we're also like, right now everybody has 9995 as their target, but maybe some groups yeah. can deal with the, uh, diff like should be able to have a different target because- Well, the... that is that is one of the things that um, I think it was Anoop has, has proposed is that different teams should have different era budgets. Um, but the but the stance that I took to them is that it would be better to have that set on an endpoint level rather than at the group level, because it has the opportunity to just sort of like hide things. No, if we're looking at specific so endpoints. At the endpoint level, um, Rachel, I think it's really important that we we can we, define the latencies, but not the yes. error budgets, right? At the at the okay. group level or the stage group level. One thing that we could consider, and, and maybe this is something where we should start um, shopping this around. There's something in the stages YAML or one of those YAML files in www.gitlab.com, which is a product maturity matrix, I think it's called. And it's like yes, all the yeah. different parts of the product and how mature they are, the lovable, blah, blah, blah. And maybe we can say that's the defining because that's yeah that calculates it's in the their inter it's in the interest of the product managers to then increase the reliability and availability it, we're all working in the same direction right whereas if if this is detached from that firstly i think it just makes really good sense from an organizational point of view that it, it becomes like well the maturity of your, pro your product is only mature if it's available um you know well, frankly agree, and it has reasonable performance I, I agree with that, but one thing to consider is that that is also for self-managed. So uh, like they're, they're looking at it from the perspective mm. of like, how does this match up to other competitors and the features that are provided by them? Um, yeah. But I agree that having this fed into what they're ordinarily doing makes a lot of sense. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe, I mean, it, it's a starting point. Like maybe it would be its own thing I, I don't know dot com maturity, but also Andrew, just every because time we we're talk having to you, problems, you give up, you give us work to do in nine months or something. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, but this is this is more like this is more like for the engineering allocation meeting, and this is more about getting people thinking about that. Sorry, this is yeah. Um, you know, we're not going to do anything on that, but but it's good to start shopping no, no, that around. I'm not complaining. Like, it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, the whole point of having this is to is to provide the teams with guidance on how to make stuff better. Yeah. And um, I think all of these are helping us move in that direction. Um, yeah. And but but the, the 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 expectation that we must set with the teams is that we're not gonna they're not gonna have control at least like fine grain control over their SLOs. Um, but they do get control over what they consider to be satisfactory. That's um, exactly yeah. right. So they will be able to say this endpoint can take two seconds because, uh, mm. but we say how many of those need yeah. to take less than two exactly. seconds. Exactly. That's, yeah. Um, and, the, uh, the last, sorry, go ahead. The one more thing is like um, right now, uh, the whole epic discusses like we're starting with a one second default like we want your request mm. to be faster than one second and we have that as a default and if you want to change it we need to have safeguards like the maximum is always going to be well for now 10 well, seconds because that's what what we have yeah, in our that, thing as well but we need to have guard rails 
like we don't want suddenly somebody saying internal allowed that's fine if it takes five seconds yeah so i think that um one possible way of doing that bob is not giving people um any number but but giving uh, categories right so um fast medium slow so actually i'm really happy with how we did this with giddily timeouts right so yeah every... i was just about to say giddily timeouts yeah and the other thing that's interesting about the giddily timeouts is that we have basically fast medium slow but the, the fast medium slow values are different for sidekick and the web right so so we can say fast medium slow and and for the web Fast is 500 milliseconds, medium is two seconds, slow is 10 seconds. I mean, if you go to conferences and people talking about 10 seconds, 10 seconds is, is like glacial, right? We should, maybe we should call it that and make it like sort of shameful, like, like fast, medium, glacial. But then on sidekick, we can have slightly um, wider, um, using the, the same. The, the, the same. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah nomenclature like the same the same words but different numbers but, but, but the... different numbers uh and and you know if we ever brought this into the product you could find that a particular um uh, self-managed instance is saying well you know for whatever reason we're getting too many alerts you know we're running on like a 486 from 1988 um and everything's slow and they say well just you know change the threshold for slow from 10 seconds to 60 I, seconds I or the opposite change it that, to one second i hadn't considered making that configurable in the product right now in this situation i do you think no 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 but but i think it should be i think it should if we can get it to be categorized rather than um numbers so like the fast medium slow rather than i i so the question there is you are speaking to stakeholders the most and it's really important that we get buy-in and so you need to figure out whether that is something that you can get buy-in on because it'll make a lot of stuff easier. But obviously if people reject it, then we've got nothing. Um, so we've got to kind of see, but I think it worked really well with the, with the Giddly timeouts. Um, That's the deadline, it, right? Yeah. It, it, it gave people guardrails and because you can't review every, the, the other thing that you can then start doing is you can say, we you know, we've spoken about if you if you said something, yeah, political, then yeah, uh, yeah, and the the other thing, you know, we've uh, this is this is a separate story, a separate thing, but we've spoken about like the criticality of things in the past, or I don't know, like some things we sh we could possibly have rules where we say, you know, these these requests are are like real hotspots in the code, and they can never be slow, like. You can never have if you encounter a slow SLI on this code path, then um, you know, like so. So imagine you hit um, a, uh, authorized keys or something like that, and that goes down into code, and somewhere in that code it hits an SLI that's got glacial. That should be something that we warn about, right? Like we should be something in the code that says we're on a we're on a like a hot spot path code here, a code path here. But that code path is ending up at this code path that's that's on a glacial SLI, you know. Like a static analysis? No, not static because we can't do static. It, it would have to be okay. dynamic, but but yeah. it could be like a thread local type. So yeah. the first path that you hit, um, you know, the, the grape endpoints or the, you know, if that's if that's set yeah. to fast, then you could have warnings or, you know, we could have that in the report. like. And then you could go to the the yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the people. We them. Like if if we say this one should be fast, JW, yeah, after yeah. whatever, and then yeah. we do something in Gitly that has a long timeout, then we can say whoa. Yeah. yeah. In fact, if we tie it in with the Gitly timeouts, that might be well. See, the thing is with Gitly, that's like a hard cutoff, so it's slightly different. But uh, yeah, for for here it's just it's, metrics. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I'll I'll take some notes of that in the the relevant issue. Yeah, yeah, I think categories would, would really help there. Because you could do the same thing with numbers, but it's it's then, you know, it's much harder to categorize well, things. And, and, and the category means that we can add a label. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the number, we wouldn't be able to do that. Like if we have four categories and every endpoint can only have one. So that means yeah. that we aren't increasing cardinality, but we do have the information in metrics. I love that idea. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Yeah, and you can and you can go to teams and say you you forty five percent glacial. You know that's you, you know you need to you need to up your um uh you know Try you need harder. to push yourself a bit harder. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Should can I be? ask one last uh, error budget question uh, before we, we reach time? Um, we currently have an error budget for teams and enablement as well global search it makes sense for but there's database in there does database yeah. need to have an error budget i mean they, they they're quite so, different from an ordinary stage group so th that's the that's goes back to i i think we shouldn't have so because we generate that from the stages yaml file like i don't think we should have things in there that are like if group equals stage group then you know leave it out what I think we should do is we should just filter out like what I was planning on doing on the InfraDev report is, uh, you know, we have the table at the top. If you've yeah. got no incidents and your traffic is below a certain number and you've got no InfraDev um, issues assigned to your group, I was actually just thinking of leaving you off because you you don't really count in a okay, so but for the, the, the database basically the database would be on there because there's four incidents they, associated with them. They exactly in their case they would because but you for know, database, they, they, why don't we add the Petroni service? Why like why don't we add the Petroni service? Because the, the state the database stage group um are you know they only have the most um minimal impact on on that Petroni SLI. You know, a lot of it is is actually on the on the data stores well, the former data stores team right like and the the that team don't aren't involved in the day-to-day -day running of the petroni server I, th I think it'll be quite a hard sell uh and i don't think they would buy into that at all so is the message that we want to send is that if the traffic share is so low then concentrating on the error budget doesn't make sense yeah i i think we should i think we should just set off a, a minimum cutoff you know because I don't know what the numbers are. Like we only express them as a percent, but you know, if it's below we do have the ten thousand as well, we we do. Yeah, yeah. We, um, I mean, if we look at them, you'll probably find that, that you know ten thousand or you know, and it's just it's just noise. Um, I think yeah. I mean, I can, like, uh, I'll, I could, I'll the, create an issue for that. Yeah. Well, the the thing is, is it was um like there's actually two questions wrapped up into one here. The the, the first one was specifically about database, but the second one was even if a feature category is small and little and not well adopted, they should still have stuff that performs well. Like even if in comparison to the grander scheme of things, yeah. it's a drop in the ocean, that team should still be held to the same standards of, of quality and reliability. Yeah, but they can't use the they... budget specifically to, to get to the best course of action because if you have two requests and one of them slow then you spend you spend 50 yeah. percent of your budget you shouldn't make that one request pass you should add more requests yeah and that's currently not communicated in what they see in the budget um yeah so i think if, but, I, if, but if you have like um i mean having two requests and one is slow is quite extreme like if you've got say for example 500 requests and 100 of them are slow do you spend time looking at your hundred slow requests? So it, it all depends. Like the team should be doing that, but whether we are spending time in high level meetings discussing that, oh, it, it, sure. it all depends like, on the audience, yeah. right? Like, like yeah. no, but I'm, if, I'm thinking if, about if engineering allocation. It shouldn't be, but, but, yeah, no, but I'm yeah, thinking possibly, about the consistent yeah. message that's sent out to everyone is that everyone should be the same. Yeah. And this yeah. is the standard. And then the high yeah. level meeting is for the ones with the traffic share over like 10%, you know, like let's just talk about yeah. the top three or four groups. That's it. About, not yeah. like, like that, the yeah. tiny little things that like, yeah. Um, yeah, it's all about the audience and it's for, for everyone. The message needs to be this, but then the focus in the meetings is on just the, 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 the at those groups. So yeah i think i think so i think in general that yeah if the teams are running something on gitlab.com they should they should be there and if they're not 
I mean, there can't be that many stage group teams that have no traffic on gitlab.com. It might be that they deal with customers.gitlab.com, in which case they should instrument that, right? Um, yeah. But that's that's a whole nother kettle of fish. The, the thing that well, we're building now will help with that. That's the whole yeah. point. Because yes. I wanted to have, uh, like, I wanted to use the same thing for Gitly client side SLIs. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, we're nearly at time. Um, is there anything else that we should be chatting about? Um, no. Awesome. Both this has been. Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> I like saying it as well. Bovril. Vegemite. Marmite. Vegemite is the other. Yeah. So they're all gross. Well, I think I think there's a shortage. It might be a worldwide shortage. There was definitely a shortage of bovril in the UK a while ago. So. You might struggle well, to come by. Yeah, my, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, back back in the back. I don't know. Yeah, back in probably the day. back to normal now. Yeah, cool. yeah. Awesome. That was then. Thank you so much. All right. Cheers. Thank you. Have a good Bye -bye. day. Thanks for joining, Andrew. I'm happy I was Thank able you. to chat with you about that. And me. Bye.